are you? A wonderful to be with you. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton's behind the camera. We're in the garage. It is a beautiful... Well, we're recording Tuesday and Wednesday Facebook pages and podcasts on a Monday afternoon. But it's a beautiful Monday afternoon. It really is. Summertime. Some, some, summertime. summertime. There's a song. Pete, you know that song? Yeah. Summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime, summertime, summertime. I don't know who did it, but it, it says it all. Uh, Black Friday sales. I don't know if you're into Black Friday sales coming up. Why do we have Black Friday sales? I do not know. Like Halloween. I don't know why we have Halloween. But anyway, any excuse for a sale? Why not? The Christmas pageant has come and gone. Uh, for me, Wonderful memories of the great, late Sir Edward Haywood from John Martin's. It was the John Martin's Christmas pageant for years and years and years and years. He was a lovely man. He was a magnificent man. If ever you go up to, um, Pete, what's it called? Uh, the beautiful old house up there past Springfield. Um, it was Sir Edward and Lady... Haywood's home, and it's now a tourist attraction. I've been up there several times. I love it. It's beautiful. Before the end of this segment, I will think of it. Carrick Hill. So. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Carrick Hill. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, old timers, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. I have no idea. No, the hard drive is getting full. The hard drive is getting full. How do you fix the hard drive once it's full? Oh, don't you, don't you. <laughs> uh, anyway, the great Christmas pageant. Um, however, on Christmas pageant day, you want to keep out of the city because nothing moves. God, it's a traffic jam. Complete. Rate hikes or cuts? Well, we will know. As I say, we're recording Monday, so... Tuesday, we will know, the RBA meets about half an hour before the running of the Melbourne Cup. Uh, my bet is they'll have a very nice afternoon. My other bet is that uh, <laughs> rates will be on hold. Uh, cuts, I think, will come in the new year. Probably about four or five rate cuts next year. But in the meantime, it is what it is. It's Guy Fawkes Day. Guy Fawkes Day today. We'll get to the dates and whatnot a little bit later on, but it's the day the Catholics tried to blow up the House of Lords and the King and the government. A revolution to rid England of Protestants. Um, a bit like the French and uh, the Huguenots, the way the French wanted to get rid of the the Huguenots, who were the French Protestants. That was back in 1798, something like that. They'd kill you. They'd kill you in France if you weren't a Catholic. What's the point of being a country if you can't protect, protect who you are and what you are? I understand that. I understand all of that. Uh, you have to have borders, language, religion, customs, customs. Your major job is don't get taken over. Don't get taken over. Multiculturalism is destroying nationalism all over the place. Everywhere, everywhere you look, I suppose there are probably... 20 million people on the move at any one time, all looking for a better place to be. And who could blame them? But we are all black, white, Christian, Muslim, Catholic, Buddhist, Hindu, whatever. We are entitled to be who we are, where we are. I find it hard to understand the modern world. Listen, we're all tribal. It's our nature. It's in our DNA, I think. 
If you're not strong or your leadership is corrupt or nuts, you won't make it. You will never see, for example, let me think, you will never see a white Christian woman running Saudi Arabia. You'll never see a Protestant nun elected Pope. A Catholic elected Archbishop of Canterbury. A white man, President of South Africa. A Taiwanese running China. But we could see a black woman from Nigeria as Prime Minister of Great Britain. I just don't get the modern world. I really don't get it. As Aboriginals believe, there's nothing wrong with being who you are, where you are, and trying to hang on to what you are. Now, if you don't agree with any of that, I can understand that. Uh, 0491 65 68 60 on Friday around the dining room table live streaming jeremycordo.com brought to you with the best wishes of these lovely people our sponsors Elder Fine Art and uh, the Rising Sun Inn on Bridge Street somebody picked me up and said it wasn't Bridge Street it was Bridge Road I've never actually noticed I sort of go there by instinct <laughs> no, it's a lovely place the beautiful rising sun in but anyway ring me up on Friday 0491 65 68 60 I look forward to that that's uh, Friday uh, it's starting to look a lot like an election <laughs> not Christmas an election just maybe a little bit earlier than we thought all this stuff announced in Adelaide just recently to take advantage of the, the, the popularity of our Premier, Peter Malinowskis, his star power, uh, they'd be aware of in Canberra. The government says that it will rejig the HEX, or they've renamed it in fact as well, HELP, H-E-L-P, the HEX or HELP arrangements, if they are re-elected. Now Paul Keating brought in this HEX scheme in the name of fairness. He argued, why should the taxpayer pay for people to access a higher standard of living? This is why, this is not his words, this is my, my memory of the day, I never went to university. I, I, I never could afford it. I, I left school and went to support, help support my mother. No, I, I, it wasn't an option for me. But I know from people I knew at the time who worked their way through university. They drove a cab, they worked in a, 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 a restaurant, they worked on the docks, they did all sorts of stuff to work their way through university and a better way of life. Is it fair to ask ordinary people like us to pay for someone to make it to the big end of town? No. No, I don't think so. These changes being offered by Anthony Albanese are, he sees it, and I guess his advisers do as well, a vote winner. Oh, they'll love this. Keep in mind, it's only if he wins the election, and it won't be implemented for more than a year, if he does win the election, it's going to cost the taxpayer, not him, the taxpayer, $16 billion. Not exactly sure what it's going to achieve, but I know what it's going to cost. $16 billion. So the Prime Minister thinks this will help him to win the election. It'll benefit him. And guess what? We're going to pay for it. <laughs> well, I won't be voting for that. It has to come back to individual responsibility.
taking money from people who never went to university and giving it to people who did. I don't think that's very clever. I don't think it's very clever politics. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it's stupid. If I want to do better in life, and I do, it's up to me. I make the sacrifices. And we can extend that out. If I want to have children, it's up to me. I won't be sending a bill for childcare to the taxpayer. It's my responsibility. We shouldn't have a system that rewards people who want to plod along. I can understand people who do, but our system should reward and encourage self-reliance and independence. The more you do for people, the more you will have to do for people. Not my words, Abraham Lincoln. The more you do for people, the more you'll have to do for people. Abe wasn't a socialist, but, you know, he was from the left, but he, I, th I think Abe Lincoln was brilliant. Just on the subject of higher learning and who should pay for it, the airy fairy, that's probably not fair, is it? The airy, I was going to say the airy fairy degrees. Uh, let's, 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 uh, let's call them uh, humanities. <laughs> Humanities. I don't think you should have to go to a university to learn how to be human. Anyway, the humanities. I'm talking about the arts, politics, economics, philosophy, social work, even journalism. I reckon those degrees should be much more expensive. And where we need more people, um, health, we need more doctors, uh, education, we need more teachers, more scientists, we need science, IT, physics, chemistry, engineering. These should be priced as courses to encourage students to take them up. Reward and incentive, very important. And call it what you like, help or hex, whatever the individual's debt happens to be, it should be interest free. It's not. The government just sort of sits there and keeps jacking it up. Should be interest free. Another thing, because of inflation, this government has added considerably to the size of these debts. But of course you'll you will never hear them admit that. The cost of university degrees went up considerably a few years ago. I'm not sure what the year was. I just want to point out, in case you haven't noticed, whenever and wherever the government gets involved to make things easier, or cheaper, the end result is that the prices go up. Health, Medicare, Medibank originally, universal free health care, a green light for an explosion in the cost of health care. Child care, doesn't matter how much money the government puts into child care, the fees will go up accordingly. Education, same thing. Oh, electricity, that's the big one. We're, <laughs> we're going to make electricity cheaper. Oh my God. Uh, look, the providers of all of these, the providers say, wacko, we'll now charge what we like because no one is paying. The government will cough up because they'll say, it won't cost us. Anyway, it makes us look good. We're looking after people. It looks good for the government to be throwing money around to help people. It doesn't help. 
When you hear somebody say, ladies and gentlemen, I am from the government and I am here to help you. Run. Run a mile. Lifeline had the... Lifeline had a bit of a record the other day. Lifeline is the largest crisis support service in Australia. I didn't know that until I saw the story. Uh, they employ a lot of people, they do a lot of good. Well, they just passed a milestone. Well, I don't, perhaps not a milestone. They broke a record. It was, in fact, on the 7th of October, just this past October, the 7th of October, 4,405 calls for help or advice in a single day. 4,405 calls. Never in their long history have they had such a demand on their counselling services. People asking for help. Most of that, I think, would be, I can't say for sure, but I would say it would be engendered because of financial trouble, one way or the other. And that is something that one could argue could be laid at the door of government. Um, how much time have we got, Pete? A few minutes. Okay. Qantas has been revealed as the outfit that gets the most lucrative of all of the government travel business. 90%. That's ridiculous. 90% 90, 90 of all government business, travel business, goes to Qantas. The rule, as I always thought it was, was the cheapest available fare. Everyone had to get or seek the cheapest available fare. Rules, of course, only work when people obey them and apply them. Well, according to the Sydney Morning Herald, Qantas flights taken by the political class and tens, I'm talking tens of millions of dollars, more expensive than their competition, that's virgin, and are, are, are they angry about all of that? These people the public servants, in other words, are not looking for the cheapest flights as they're supposed to. Now, what does that tell you about the public service and the political class? The government is out of touch. That's what it tells me. Out of touch. This deal with Qantas is costing $250 million a year for politicians, advisers, staffers, and we mustn't forget the public servants. They don't care. That's how we feel. They don't care. It's only public money. The Libs would be on a winner if they promised a new deal. Gee whiz, they'd be on a deal. A new deal. New respect for the taxpayer. A promise to review all of the largesse, the excesses. The governments look at us, aren't we doing a great job? TV commercials and radio commercials, all those expensive public relations companies, the consultants, the billions spent on endless consultants when we have an expensive and, I imagine, competent public service, First class travel, com cars as far as the eye can see, chauffeur driven com cars at all hours of the day and night, hospitality, perks of every description. We spend or we waste billions on trying to get people to like us. For example, I brought it up the other day with you, the $600 million that Anthony Albanese wants to spend to help Papua New Guinea get a football team together. Who says that's a good investment? But you know, you see, for Peter Dutton to come out there and say, I, we, I'm going to give you a new deal on all of this. We're going to, we're going to save billions. We, we, we've got to, he's got to convince us that he's going to be any better 
than Anthony Albanese and the Labour Socialists. It would be a, 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 a litmus test, wouldn't it? To come out there and say, we are not going to be like that. But you wouldn't want to vote for anyone to continue the same consistent rorts that go on at public expense. Peter Dutton, I challenge you, come out there and say, I'm going to be different. I'm going to get rid of all that crap. Let's see what happens. Gee whiz. Okay, let's do some some dates. Uh, happy birthday if you're having a birthday or a wedding anniversary. I hope all of us here in the Court of Public Opinion, we wish you well. The dates. Here we go. It's November 5. Golly. Almost Christmas. November 5. On this day in 1935, Parker Brothers launched the board game... Pete, what do you reckon? Uh, Monopoly. Monopoly, you're right. Spot yeah? <laughs> Spot on. But, you know, you wouldn't launch... Because that was just after the Depression, or sort of, kind of, towards the end of the Depression. Not the time to launch anything, but gee whiz. It worked a treat. I wonder how many board games of Monopoly they've sold over the years. Golly. Uh, 1955, the date, this was the date <coughs> that they returned to in Back to the Future. <laughs> I don't know why they picked it. Marty McFly picked it. <coughs> this was the date. November 5, 1955. Oh yes, the gunpowder plot. Uh, 1605, the gunpowder plot. Catholic conspirator Guy Fawkes attempts to blow up King James I and the British Parliament. Plot discovered. Guy Fawkes caught, tortured, later executed, hung, drawn and quartered, which was a really unpleasant way to go. Uh, celebrated ever since as Guy Fawkes Day with his effigy, traditionally burnt on a bonfire accompanied by fireworks. I miss, I miss Cracker Night. It was good, the smell of gunpowder. <laughs> and we kids would go around and we'd pile up these things at the end of the street, great big bonfires, and all the parents would gather around. Simple, lovely time. And no, no, nobody talked about... I think we used to burn tyres. People would throw car tyres on, a, on a, a bonfire. Can you imagine how bad that was? Can you imagine? God. 2015... Collins Dictionary blames, well, who do you blame? The modern world, I suppose. You know what they picked as the word of the year? Pete? No, I don't. No. Binge watch. And the second most successful word was transgender. God 2015, God help us. Um, 19... 13. Vivian Lee, the English actress, gone with the wind, a streetcar named Desire, born in Darjeeling, India. She died in 1967, but born this day in 1913. What a beautiful woman Vivian Lee was. Adolf Hitler informs his military leaders in a secret meeting of his intentions to go to war. That was this day, back in 1937. So we appeased him for quite a few years when we shouldn't have. Uh, he was arming himself to the teeth. 1941, Art Garfunkel, I like him. American singer, Simon Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, Bright Eyes. Actor as well, he was born New York City, this day in 1941. The first US automobile patent was granted to George B. Selden for a gasoline-driven car, God bless you, sir, 1895 was the year, and this was the day. And I look around this garage and I see, sir, a tribute to you everywhere. <laughs> uh, Christopher Columbus learns how to grow and harvest maize, which is, what is maize? Corn. Corn, yeah. Corn. From Cuba's indigenous population back in 1492. Fred McMurray, American actor, double indemnity, was in the apartment. My three sons, he dies of pneumonia at 83. The year was 1991. Brian Adams, 
uh, Canadian. Um, he was born in Ontario. Everything I do. What was that song? It was from Robin Hood, wasn't it? Yeah, Everything yeah, I do, song. I do for you. Yeah. Just beautiful, beautiful song. Did you ever sing that? No. Pretty, pretty song. Uh, 1925, British secret agent, Sidney Riley, ace of spies, is executed in a forest near Moxic, um, Moscow by the was a forerunner of the KGB, OGPU, the secret police of the Soviet Union back in 1925. Tatum O'Neill, American actress, Paper Moon, Little Darling, ex-wife of John McEnroe, uh, born in uh, Los Angeles. Ryan O'Neill uh, was her father. In fact, I think she was in Paper Moon with uh, Ryan O'Neill. Tatum O'Neill. 1963, anyway, she was born. And the, uh, one more, 1854, the Crimean War, British and French defeat Russian forces of 50,000. Yes. And, uh, of course, that was the beginning of this wonderful tradition called the Victoria Cross. Thank you very much for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeremy Cordo, Peter Clayton and I will be back tomorrow here in the garage in the Court of Public Opinion. And don't forget Friday, around the dining room table, jeremycordo.com, live streaming, three hours of interesting, different sort of radio. Believe in yourself and goodbye for now. <laughs>